Hi, welcome back to Chameleon Metadata's learning and education series of instructional tutorials. Today we're going to start at the chameleonmetadata.com site, hit one of the education links, and be brought to the education part of our website. This is the first in a series of three required prerequisites to run open source Unix type software on a Windows PC. All this will work if you're using a real Unix or Linux box. You can just skip this step, but we still need to make sure Java is configured properly and Maven. So going forward, we're going to assume that this is a, a Windows box, a uh, Windows computer, and you want to run a little bubble, we'll call it, uh, inside the Windows PC that can run Unix inside Windows without messing with your existing uh, configurations. So as I said, let's just jump right into it. We might move a little quickly through the video because each site comes with a full um, layout. This one has four main steps to get the download, create a directory, configure the path for Windows, and verify we did everything right. All of our video outlines like this have a, a link in the upper right corner of the margin for a one-page a PDF document of the outline and in the uh, lower right part of the upper margin is a way to send me email my email address et at chameleon metadata.com so jumping right into it the first step is to get your file I've actually put a copy of JDK 8 update 73 64 bit on the chameleon metadata website if you can't use that version or you uh, for whatever other reason you want to go oh, you may need the 32 bit there's a lot of reasons this second link will bring you right to the um, the Oracle Java site itself just note if you don't use the same version that I'm using in further steps we're going to have to um, change that directory to match if you use a different one here so let's jump into it download I'm going to pick to download the zip file to save a little time I already downloaded it into my downloads folder I unzipped it right where it was and I've got an executable so looking at that if you had the PDF you've now checked off step one step two we're going to create a new Java directory called C Java so from here we'll go into the C folder if we go back to this outline we're using the C folder because we want to make sure it's the same directory where Windows was also installed so since this this computer has Windows installed on C we're in the C directory we're going to make a new folder we're going to call it Java so there's our new folder now you may in fact have an already installed Java inside program files folders leave it alone this shouldn't mess with that so we've configured our C directory here the next thing we're going to do is we're going to execute the download folder uh, file that we got earlier. So here is the executable. And I'm going to say no because when installing software on Windows 8, 7, I think, but 8 and 10 certainly, best bet is to right click it and hit run as administrator not quite sure what it does but it seems to have less problems so let's download this and we'll see how this goes so the first part is going to install what's called the Java, Java development kit the JDK if we look at our upper part we want to make sure everything has all components selected we'll go back to our outline here and we're going to want to change the directory next for the Java JDK so in this particular one you notice like I said before it wants to put it inside program files we really don't want that and so what we're going to do is that 
So now notice as per the directions, we have the directory change to the um, JDK 180 underscore 73. So we're copying the files. Now while that copies, there's two parts of the install. And in fact, I'm just re-recording this video because it got me. I just hit next and it got me. But the JDK installs, and then the next part is going to be the JRE. I, you know, don't worry about the techno babble. But this is what really runs your um, your Java programs as a civilian, if it were, when you don't need all the extras that are in the JDK kit. Now, again, I'm not comfortable putting it in the program files because it may damage something that you've got involved. So I just, again, point it right to the base Java directory. And other people might do a subdirectory called JRE8. I point it right to C Java and go ahead. It's going to install to C Java and hit next. And then once that installs, we've got the two components that I'm talking to on uh, the second part. They're really two installations. You saw as the second piece was going, the JRE needs to be put uh, to C Java as well. Remember, I'm making such a big deal over that C Java thing so that if, God forbid, something doesn't work, you can back these steps out and nothing should uh, have affected your existing Java install. So we're going to close that. And now at this point, we've done all of that. So we have in our main outline the download and the install done. Now we're going to configure the Windows path. Now in the Windows path, these are things that will override program settings. So I'm going to go into um, Start. Oh, and by the way, if you're using eight, Windows 8 or 10 or Server 2012, and it's a hassle for you not to have the Start button, this is a program called Classic Shell, and it puts the old Start button back, which is great for me from the Windows XP and Windows 7 days. So I'm going to right click on this PC. A different way you could do it is go into Control Panel and then go into System. And when you get into System, we're looking for Advanced System Settings and the Environment Variables. Now, we notice that this was a PC purchased from Amazon.com. So most times, or in a lot of cases, you might not even have a Java home variable, but if you do ha have one, we're going to edit it using this button. If you don't, we're going to hit New. One of the other things I've found that helps me with typos is go to the C, go into Java, and just anything in that uh, JDK 1.8, the one we just installed, do properties, and now this way I know I'm control C. Now I know I won't do a typo, so I'm going to do Java home, get rid of the old value. Again, programs there should still work. So we've got the new Java home set to the version 8, and on the path statement, Unlike Java Home, every Windows PC has a path statement, so I can't imagine you'd have to hit New. So we're going to hit Edit, and, uh, oh, I'm sorry, uh, double-click the path. There we go. So when we double-click the path, we notice uh, this is the Windows 10 version. Let's take a real quick second and show you how this would work just on an old, this is a server 2012, but the properties button is, is a little different. So we're going to go start control panel on this one, system, advanced, environment. And on the old way, the path comes up like this. For the old style, everything we're going to do in these tutorials, put all the way to the left in front of everything. You'll notice further down, I'll show you in the other one, so I'm just canceling out of here. 
That's just to give you an example on up until Windows 10, it looked like that. On Windows 10, it starts to look like this. You notice that in the path, our Java builds for 6 update 21, don't touch those. We're going to leave those where they were. And if you remember, I went over to the Java and did properties. So I can put a new variable for where our new Java is and move it all the way up to the top, which is the same as being in the front there. And then we're going to add one other one, the same path with BIN. And we're going to say OK on that one and move him up. He should be this the bin should be second. The one without bin should be first. In the old style, this should be the leftmost value, second to leftmost value, like we just showed. So there's our path. The Java home is set. So we're good there. We're going to OK, OK, and close. So now we've configured, and notice, you don't have to get rid of that one had 1.6 in there. Leave that alone. The last part is to see, did we do this right? Okay. So in my case, since I have classic shell, I'll just hit start and run. And then I'm going to do the CMD. Any way you can get a C prompt won't matter. And then we're going to go full screen to make it a little, you know, I don't like that. And we're going to say Java space hyphen and the word version, just as it's laid out. And you'll notice we're running version 1.8 update 73. So if you get that message, you're in good shape. It's the same one we've got here. And with that, I think we're good with Java. So this was the first um, of the three prerequisites. The tape you're watching now, I'm going to put a video icon next to it. As the video icons go, that means the videos are available and you're watching the Java one now. And next will be Sigwin and Maven. And I, as I said, for everything else to work, I'm expecting you configure things. I don't care what version of Java you have, but you should be able to do the Java home kind of um, command like I did and just make sure it works like you did if you use the different one. And again, I recommend using version 8. Version 7 and earlier have sometimes a little trickier to get working with open source software. So this is Eric Thornton for the Chameleon Metadata Learning and Education series of tutorials. And I'll look forward to seeing you in the Sigwin video.